Well, hey guys, recently I was on Neutrogena's website. I discovered they are discontinuing a ton of products, many of which are longstanding favorites of mine that I have recommended in several videos. So in today's video, I'm gonna go through some of my favorites that are being discontinued and I'm going to offer alternative product suggestions if you are someone who has been using these either because of my recommendation or just you know because you found them and like them today's video is in partnership with walmart you can buy neutrogena at walmart you guys know i shop at walmart a fair amount and some of my most popular videos actually are of me shopping in walmart for skincare and hair care products so definitely check those out but anything i mentioned in today's video you can find at walmart either in store or online and i will link things down below really bummed to find out they are discontinuing the anti-residue shampoo. A few years ago, I made a video on the utility of incorporating a clarifying shampoo into your hair care routine. And in that video, I mentioned the anti-residue shampoo as a great option. It's being DC'd, sad to hear. Clarifying shampoos differ from your everyday shampoo in that they tend to be a lot stronger as far as their surfactant formulation. They're intended to strip away, actually, build up, uh, from products or hard water buildup. Or if you go in a pool and you get chlorine in your hair, you know, it could turn your hair green. It can help kind of remove that as well. It also can help remove buildup from the scalp that would otherwise lead to scalp itch. And it's not a shampoo you're gonna be using every day. At most, you wanna use a clarifying shampoo once a week. So an alternative to the wonderful anti-residue shampoo is by Garnier Fructis. You know, a while ago I discovered these Pure Clean Hair Reset shampoos from them, and I have been really impressed with them. I've recommended the charcoal shampoo in another video. It also has salicylic acid in it, which is helpful for dandruff, cruelty-free and vegan. Now, the way to use a clarifying shampoo, again, it's not an everyday shampoo, but the way to use one is to lather it to the scalp and to the strands. And initially with the first lather, you're probably not gonna get much in the way of foam. You actually then wanna rinse it out and repeat. The second time you lather it, let it sit on the scalp and the hair strands for a minute or so, especially if you have, if you're someone who uses a lot of hair styling products and you have a lot of buildup, let it sit on there for a few minutes and then rinse it out. Now, because these shampoos are a lot stronger in terms of the surfactants, they will leave the hair very unmanageable. So I highly suggest following it up with a conditioning hair mask or, you know, regular conditioner is fine, but when I use the clarifying shampoo, I follow it up with a hair mask just to help keep my hair shiny and manageable and not overly stripped. It's kind of a delicate balance. You wanna remove the buildup, but you don't wanna you know, leave your hair brittle and prone to, to breakage and tangles. I use it because I live somewhere with really hard water, uh, so it can help remove hard water buildup. Now, if you're somebody who doesn't live somewhere with hard water, your hair's not affected by that, and you don't use styling products, do you need to use a clarifying shampoo? No. But if you end up going in the pool a lot in the summer, you know, just your hair has kind of a dry brittleness to it as a result of the chlorine buildup, or you're blonde and the hair is turning green, well, then you might want to incorporate a clarifying shampoo. This one's good. I like the scent. Um, the Neutrogena one was scented as well. $6.97. So that is not a bad price. The second one I was really bummed to see being discontinued. I've used this off and on. It's their Protect and Tint Tinted Moisturizer SPF. 30. I really like this. They offered five shades. It offered really decent coverage, uh, almost somewhere in between a tinted sunscreen and a foundation. It hit a nice happy medium. And so it was really good for putting on over like a base layer of sunscreen. It really gave a nice kind of luminous glow to the skin. It was formulated with iron oxides, which may help in protecting against a visible light that comes from the sun that leads to hyperpigmentation and deeper skin tones. It was a broad spectrum hybrid sunscreen. It had titanium dioxide in it, but no zinc. So I always questioned how, how good the UVA protection of it was. Regardless, it was, you know, kind of meant to be a tinted moisturizer. It was a really nice nice product. I always used it over, over sunscreen. It was free of fragrance too, another thing I liked. Currently, I am using, wearing on my face right now, the Rodeal Skin Tint SPF 20. I'm in the shade Hamptons. Um, and this is really good, but it is significantly more expensive. Another product, however, that is relatively affordable that I've always liked and recommended and offers quite a decent shade range is the Derma E Tinted Moisturizing BB Cream. That one's an all mineral formula. 
those would be some alternatives, but I'm hoping that Neutrogena comes out with a similar product because I really always enjoyed the coverage that that afforded. And I know a lot of you guys commented that that was a favorite product of yours as well in a lot of my videos where I was using it. So bummed that they have gotten rid of that. The third product is not necessarily a favorite of mine or one that I've even recommended, but I want to bring it up here. Ultra Sheer Dry Touch Sunscreen Broad Spectrum SPF 100 Plus. Okay, first of all, 100 plus, wow. Isn't that just a gimmicky marketing thing? Well, it turns out that SPF 100 ends up in real world use being better at protecting you from a burn just because of the nature of in which people apply sunscreen they tend to apply it with a light hand and so they never actually end up achieving the spf stated on the bottle so higher spf may actually end up being better now i suspect this product is being discontinued because it had oxybenzone in it and oxybenzone is an ingredient that is not dangerous but of all the sunscreen ingredients it's the most common one for you to become allergic to and personally i think it is what is responsible for the burning and stinging and the burny eye sensation that neutrogena sunscreens often have this product also had fragrance which is another common allergen in skincare products and it had unfortunately methyl isothiazolinone which is a common allergen it's a preservative but it's a common allergen so i suspect that people bought this and found that it burned and stung around the eyes which is common with neutrogena sunscreens especially at the higher spf and i suspect that it was discontinued because there's kind of a push away from oxybenzone because it is irritating. And maybe the MI, the methyl isothiazolinone, maybe they factor that in too, like, hey, this is kind of a common allergen, maybe we should remove it and, and get rid of this product. Now, Neutrogena has a similar product that is their Ultra Sheer Dry Touch SPF 70. Unlike the SPF 100 plus that has been discontinued, this one does not have methyl isothiazolinone in it. And this one doesn't have oxybenzone in it. It is water resistant, so it's still a great choice for using when you are outdoors participating in sport. And the thing about this ultra sheer dry touch line that I think a lot of people did do like is that it's not greasy and it it's quick absorbing. It has aluminum starch in it, I believe, which helps absorb sebum from the skin. So when you're outdoors, really sweaty, it's comfortable to apply and reapply. That one does have fragrance, but it, you know, if, if the Ultra Sheer was your holy grail, then try the, try the SPF 71. Another reason I wanted to mention this though, is that now on Neutrogena's website, when you go to the sunscreen section, they no longer offer a sunscreen that is SPF 100 plus, because here in the US, we have so few chemical filters that we that are approved by the FDA for use in sunscreens that I think it really limits the the formulators in terms of how high of an SPF they can produce. Now that being said, there are SPF 100 sunscreens out there on the market that do not have oxybenzone. So maybe Neutrogena will come out with a new oxybenzone free SPF 100 soon. That would be helpful just based on the study that we have that shows that SPF 100 ends up being better at protecting against a burn than SPF like 50 just because of the nature in which people apply sunscreen. All right, number four is their Rapid Clear Stubborn Acne Daily Leave-On Mask. This was a great product as a spot treatment, especially it was a 2.5% benzoyl peroxide leave-on product. I have recommended this in a lot of videos over the years, but I think their newer product is better. So the newer product that I would suggest as an alternative is the Stubborn Acne AM Treatment. This is benzoyl peroxide, same percentage, 2.5%. But they advertise this one as being micronized benzoyl peroxide. So I don't know if the micronization is a new aspect in their formulations, but micronizing particles, it does reduce irritation. If you've ever used benzoyl peroxide, it can be very, very irritating and drying. And so I think that overall, I've used this, tried it out myself. This is much less drying. So if you are, have been told to use benzoyl peroxide, I highly suggest this. I do think it is a substantial improvement from the older leave-on mask. Now, one thing to note about this or any benzoyl peroxide that you're gonna leave on the skin is you've gotta be really careful to not 
touch fabrics like with your face like your pillowcase for example or you know when you put on your clothing because if it transfers to your clothing fabrics it's going to bleach them but benzoyl peroxide is a very valuable ingredient in the treatment of acne it helps clear ac existing acne and it helps prevent future breakouts it's antibacterial but the bacteria within the pore that contribute to acne cannot develop resistance to benzoyl peroxide it's, it just can be very drying but with these newer micronized formulations the tolerability of it has improved. Next is the Healthy Skin Anti-Wrinkle Cream. I tried this a few years ago and it was quite good. Fragrance-free retinol and Neutrogena does a really good job with their retinols. They have a lot of R&D behind them. I have a lot of confidence in the stability and efficacy of their retinol. Retinol is an anti-wrinkle ingredient and unlike retinoids like tretinoin or adapalene, retinol has to be converted to the active form in your skin. It has to undergo two steps to get it to that state. So a lot of of the efficacy of a cosmetic retinol is contingent on the quality of the formulation. So that is why I recommend Neutrogena products. And this Healthy Skin Anti-Wrinkle Night Cream was a good one. It has retinol in it, had retinol in it, was free of fragrance. But Neutrogena has another retinol product that I hope they never, ever, ever discontinue. It is the Rapid Wrinkle Repair Regenerating Cream, the fragrance-free one. It almost gives the skin an almost immediate plumped look. I don't know if it's a combination of kind of the pearlescent appearance of it or the fact that this product, unlike the other one, has sodium hyaluronate that helps hydrate the skin and kind of smooth out wrinkles and fine lines. All right, so that's the rapid wrinkle repair. It's basically marketed to people who are looking for retinol for kind of anti-aging purposes. But Neutrogena has a similar product in terms of the retinol. It's their Stubborn Marks PM treatment. This is marketed, rather than for wrinkles, it's marketed for acne. Uh, retinol may help improve improve closed comedones and help with, with breakouts and also can help improve hyperpigmentation that results from leftover acne. This is the same retinol as in their rapid wrinkle repair cream, SA, which stands for sustained action, kind of an encapsulated retinol, which allows for more slow release, less irritation. The main difference, in my opinion, between this and the rapid wrinkle repair regenerating cream is honestly boils down to consistency. That product is a very nice, rich facial cream. Um, very good if you have dry skin, mature skin. This is more for people who have acne, so it's a lot more lightweight. But overall, the retinol, it's the same ingredient. And so, you know, if you have used the Rapid Wrinkle Repair Regenerating Cream, it's out and you wanted to dry this, I think you would be well served by that as well. So I wanted to mention that because it is a newer product. I think it came out last year, but it would be an alternative if you've been using this Healthy Skin Anti-Wrinkle Night Cream. All right, number six, I mentioned this in a recent blog and I kind of misspoke realizing it now. They are discontinuing the Norwegian formula hand cream, but they're only discontinuing the scented one. They're keeping the fragrance-free one. The Norwegian formula fragrance-free hand cream has been a holy grail favorite of mine for years and years and years. Very fast absorbing, non-greasy, helps reduce water loss from the hands. It's just easy to reapply after, if you've been washing your hands a lot. I noticed on their website, they are discontinuing a lot of the Norwegian formula uh, products. So I hope they don't discontinue the fragrance-free hand cream, but it's still available, highly recommend it. I wish Neutrogena would come out with like a Norwegian formula hand cream with sunscreen in it. Anyways, all right, the next one is another shampoo and I kind of feel like this is just a kick in the pants to my childhood because I actually use this as a child off and on. It is the T-Gel Coal Tar Shampoo. Coal Tar is anti-inflammatory and can really help with scalp itch. It's a great ingredient ingredient for psoriasis. As a matter of fact, there is a psoriasis treatment called Geckerman therapy in which we coat the patient in coal tar and then irradiate the skin with narrowband UVB and it can work amazing to clear the psoriasis. Unfortunately, while it is a very effective therapy for clearing the psoriasis, unfortunately it takes all day and you are treated daily until the psoriasis clears. So guess who's not so keen on reimbursing for that? Insurance and what have you. So because reimbursements have gone away for that, it is very rare that you will find someone who does Geckerman therapy anymore. The exception is, um, at least that, that comes to mind, is in San Francisco at, U at UCSF, University of California, San Francisco, they do have a Geckerman 
uh, facility, you know, facility where you can go and have this treatment. But it's very effective for not only psoriasis, but a lot of other uh, skin conditions. Something called perigo nodularis, where you have itch in the skin and it causes you to scratch so much that you develop these thick bumps. And so people do really well with this treatment, unfortunately, because of it's very time intensive and insurance is just not willing to reimburse for them. Um, but all that rambling aside is a great ingredient in shampoos to calm down uh, scalp psoriasis, seborrheic dermatitis, AKA dandruff, or just scalp itch in general. As you know, as a child, I had pretty bad eczema. I still have eczema here and there. And I would use it on my scalp and it really helped with the scalp itch. Now, they're discontinuing it, I suspect, probably because, you know, maybe it's not as popular, but clean beauty kind of fear mongers around coal tar, unfortunately. However, there is a brand uh, called MG217. They make um, a couple of dandruff shampoos, I think. MG217, their 3% coal tar formula is quite good. So that, that would be another option and it's very good. It does have fragrance. Um, it is a good ingredient for helping. If you've got a lot of scalp itch, I highly suggest considering it. It is a safe ingredient um, and, and it's effective. All right, and then last but not least, is another Norwegian formula product. It's a Norwegian formula lip moisture with SPF 15. Now this is not a broad spectrum lip sunscreen. It just offered UVB protection, which isn't broad spectrum. It's not enough. It was a good, it was a well-liked and well-tolerated product, which for lip balms, you know, SPF lip balms, it can be a bit of a challenge to find one that's not drying, irritating. It can be a challenge to find one that's free of fragrance. This one was not broad spectrum, unfortunately. Maybe that's why they're discontinuing it. I don't know if it had oxybenzone in it or not, but it was a pretty moisturizing formulation. I would suggest instead as a lip SPF, you probably know what I'm gonna suggest. It's the Vanny Cream Lip SPF. That one is broad spectrum, free of fragrance, very moisturizing. It does leave a bit of a cast to the lips but that one would be a great choice. And this is especially important for everyone to be using SPF lip balm, protecting the lips. The lips are a lot more vulnerable, not only to sun damage, but just to environmental stressors. There's less protective layer with lips. And so they're more prone to irritation. But if you get cold sores, uh, which yeah, I know a lot of you do because I've done several videos on cold sores, wearing a SPF lip balm can help reduce the frequency of outbreaks because Exposure to UV rays will trigger an outbreak. But speaking of lip products, I mentioned this in a vlog recently. I have been using this product from Neutrogena. I've used these before, but I wanna give it a shout out because I'm wearing it here and you may be wondering what's on my lips. It is a Hydra Boost uh, Hydrating Lip Shine. Now these, they have a ton of shades and they're very moisturizing. There's no fragrance in them. There are no flavorants. Fragrance and flavorants can cause irritation to the lips, so I suggest trying to avoid that in your lip care products. Um, it can be hard to find them, though, that are free of that. Anyways, it has hyaluronic acid in it. I like the color, but they have a variety of different colors, so I wanted to point that out. The shade is Radiant Rose. It doesn't have sunscreen in it. That's my only gripe with it, but uh, you know, for wearing indoors, it looks nice. So I wanted to share that with you all. Let me know in the comments, do you have any holy grails from Neutrogena that you hope never get discontinued or go away? For me, it's gotta be the Rapid Wrinkle Repair Regenerating Cream Fragrance Free, the Hydro Boost Hydrating Gel Cream Fragrance Free, the Hydro Boost Body Lotion Fragrance Free, and the Norwegian Formula Hand Cream Fragrance Free. Please don't discontinue those, but let me know in the comments if you have a holy grail Neutrogena product you want to stay forever and ever. I hope you all enjoyed this video and thank you Walmart for sponsoring. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.